Oh, what? Oops. Sugar. There it is. We're going to talk about sugar. We're going to talk about high fructose corn syrup. We're going to talk about soy. We're going to talk about artificial sweeteners. And again, we're going to talk about gas. Pasteurized dairy. Okay? I love the gas. <laughs> Hang with me, guys. So, let's start with sugar. This is just a small list of some of the metabolic consequences from sugar. This is where I set land speed records and talking fast. It suppresses your immune system, impairs your defense against infectious disease. It causes a rise in cholesterol, triglycerides, and bad cholesterol. It causes a loss of tissue elasticity and function. Sugar is known to feed cancer. It causes indigestion, increases risk of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. It causes premature aging. It causes obesity, autoimmune diseases such as arthritis, asthma, multiple sclerosis, gallstones, appendicitis, hemorrhoids, varicose. Do I sound like one of those commercials for drugs? <laughs> <laughs> Osteoporosis, diabetes, increased blood pressure, food allergies, toxemia during pregnancy, eczema, atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease. Emphysema, formation of kidney stones, migraines, depression, oh. epileptic seizures. If you have the equivalent of one of those fun size snicker bars, mm -hmm. that wipes out your immune system within 30 minutes and lasts over five hours. So, I just had a patient the other day, actually it was this morning, who um, had his tonsils removed. And guess what they gave him for three weeks? Ice cream. You think that helped him heal any faster? No. No. Do you think a candy bar is a good thing to eat if you have a cold? No. Do you think it's a good thing to have if you have cancer? <laughs> we are busiest during what is known as the flu season. We affectionately call it the sugar season. Starting right after Halloween, when kids have all the sugar, through Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then all the way through Valentine's Day. We are booked solid because of sugar. Hmm. References, references, references. High fructose corn syrup is sugar on steroids. It's man-made, but it's worse. It's even sweeter than sugar, like a hundred and I don't know how many times sweeter. Mm -hmm. But it causes worse, um, actually it catalyzes the whole sugar process. So it takes fewer, I guess less time, to create those same symptoms. So that's all we have to say about high fructose corn syrup. Not good for you at all. Soy, very misunderstood. I have probably more questions about this than maybe anything else. I actually have soy brochures for anybody who is interested. But we're all taught that soy protein is a good protein, right? It's a health food. Let's go through this. The myth is that Asians consume large amounts of soy. Yes, in the last decade, they've consumed more tofu. But traditionally speaking, they use soy as a condiment. Modern soy foods confer the same health food benefits as traditionally fermented soy foods. They don't. Fermented soy is called natto or miso. Very good for us. Not so nice in smell or in aroma, but very good for you. The modern soy foods are not fermented, and therefore they have toxins in them. Soy foods do not provide complete proteins. They have a deficiency in sulfur-containing amino acids. Soy isoflavones and soy protein isolates have graph status safe. They're not. In fact, they're concerned about the presence of toxins and are known car carcinogens in them. Soy formula is safe for infants. We all know parents who have given their kids soy formula because it's healthier. They've proven now with numerous research studies that it stunts growth and causes pancreatic disorders. It we'll get to another slide with this, but it increases premature sexual development, in particular in girls, and it delays the sexual development in boys. We'll talk about why shortly. With the soy infant formula, it's equivalent to really it's like taking birth control pills. Babies fed soy-based formula have 13 to 22,000 times more estrogen compounds in their blood than babies fed milk-based formula. That's like taking five birth control pills every day for a baby, for a baby. Mm. Another myth, soy foods can prevent osteoporosis. No, they actually promote it. It causes deficiencies in calcium. Modern soy foods protect against many types of cancer. They actually increase your risk of developing certain cancers. 
Soy estrogens are good for you. Again, they're not. They can prevent ovulation and stimulate the growth of cancer cells. Four tablespoons of soy causes hypothyroidism-like symptoms, lethargy, constipation, weight gain, and fatigue. Soy foods are not safe, nor are they beneficial for women to use in their postmenopausal year. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are, soy is not good for you. Let me give you a little history on soy. <coughs> this is not in the notes. Soy was traditionally used, or initially used, every other year they would rotate crops. It used to be corn and soy. The soy was never harvested, it was just tilled under, because it would put nitrates back in the soil. But after years of doing that, it didn't make economic sense for them, at least financially, because they were losing money every year. So they started to harvest it and use it as food for livestock. Well, after the livestock started to eat it, they realized, well, heck, let's try and market this as a health food for humans. So it started out as, remember the soy nut craze? Yeah, so that's how it started, and then slowly they started to implement it into most of our foods. It is very difficult to find food that doesn't have soy in it. Mm. Anybody eat cereal? 99% of your cereals have soy. How about white bread or wheat bread? Soy. What about um, whole grain? Soy. Well, yeah, well, there's a the whole soy in it. What's that? Oil? Is it the soy in the oil? The most commonly it's soy lecithin, but it could be soybean oil. How can it be in our bread? <laughs> Check Look, it out. <laughs> or come to our reading ingredients class. Where are they putting it? In the oil? Oh, they're sneaky. <laughs> no, I it, know. It's, they usually, it it's, it's usually in the form of soy lecithin. It's an anti-caking agent wow. and emulsifier. Soy food is not good for your sex life, men. It causes decrease in testosterone, a.k.a. testicular shrinkage. So it's not good for your sex life. Here's going back to this, uh, that slide earlier. 15% of white girls and 50% of African American girls show signs of puberty, breast development, pubic hair, much earlier. The ages of 7, 8, 9. In fact, think about when you were, were growing up. Puberty didn't start until your teen years. And now you look at girls very, very young and they're developing. My cousin's daughter just had her first period. She's 10. And that's, that's not uncommon. Um, premature development of girls has been linked to the use of soy porno, not to mention the hormones that come in our foods and our dairy products. So are you confused about soy? Again, if you want, pick up a pamphlet from me, but we'll just hit the bullet points. Soy does disrupt endocrine function. It causes infertility, promotes breast cancer, causes hypothyroidism, and may cause thyroid cancer.